Today's guest is all positive vibes. This is Randy Havison. He's an internationally renowned speaker, author, and life coach. He's spoken to hundreds of thousands of people around the globe over the past 30 years. And one of his books is an Amazon number one bestseller. We're going to talk about that book called The Ego Cleanse in this episode and talking about being your own best friend. Wow. You can tell that Randy is walking the walk when he talks about this and he's just honestly so fun and enjoyable to listen to. I know you guys are going to just feel like at another level when you get done with this episode, his message is one of hope and overcoming life's obstacles. He talks about his own um, battle with drug and alcohol addiction and how he overcame that and then became a psychologist. Um, he shares some, some of the juice from his Ted talk, um, and owning his own business, being a therapist, a life life coach, father. Um, and he's just, yeah, he has such great insights on how we can improve our relationship with ourselves and what self-esteem really is versus how we think it is, right? We get so caught up in earning. We think we have to earn self-esteem and he's talking about how that is more ego. So we're going to go ahead and drop right into this. Here is Randy Havison. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, or a ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles, do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so 
that's that's how I approach things in higher. There's more. We do prizes every month. Nikes, Lulus, um, all of my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week, so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest, and it's just yeah, it's like. I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Randy, I'm very excited to start off by talking about your book, the ego cleanse and being your own best friend. Oh my gosh. This speaks to me so much. I'm sure you're probably familiar with the work of Byron Katie. Are you familiar with the work? I don't know if that's something you've no. ever, okay. Well, do that's... I need to be? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if being your own best friend is your jam, yeah. you would love yes. the work of Byron Katie. And I've been working with one of her coaches for the last few years. And it's really, truly, it's about um, changing the stories in your mind. Right. And yes. so taking a look at the story that's been created by a trigger and what, you know, where you kind of got off on that. And I think so many of us, like it's, I, I don't know, I'll get, we'll hear your thoughts, but I feel like it's almost, um, encouraged in our, in today's society to be mean to yourself, to put yourself down. Like if you don't do that, like if you make a mistake and you don't put yourself down and have negative self-talk, then you're not a self-aware person is almost the kind of, it's like, you should feel shame and sad and beat yourself up. You know, like we were all raised on that. So anyway, I'll turn it over to you. Can you tell us basically what is the premise of the ego cleanse? And then we'll kind of get into your story and how you got there. Sure. And it's pretty much exactly what you said the messages that we've received our entire lives are messages that have screwed us up yeah because they're not authentic to who we are you know we're taught to compare ourselves to everybody else and to judge ourselves by a car or a salary or a zip code or a number on a scale and that is the determinant of our worth right and i realized a long time ago that what that reinforces is our ego and how our society mm. tells us that ego and self-esteem are the same thing. Mm. That if we have those things, we have more esteem. You know, every, Madison mm. Avenue spends billions of dollars a year teaching you that you need this car to be okay. You need this label on the back of your shirt to have worth. Right. But it's not true. And, and the trigger for me I remember I was watching TV one day and a commercial came on that said, do you want to feel better about yourself and grow your self-esteem? Join the hair club for men and you'll grow more hair and have more self-esteem. And I thought, Gosh. what? My self-esteem depends on how many follicles I have. And it started me on this journey, realizing that ego and self-esteem are not connected. They're actually on opposite ends of a continuum. Oof. That when you reinforce your ego, you're denying your self-esteem. When you build your self-esteem, it has nothing to do with ego whatsoever. And it's to take a look at who you are on the inside, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to start treating yourself like your own best friend rather than your own worst enemy. So when I make a mistake, you know, back in the ego days, I do something, I make a mistake. Oh, I get a C on a test. And I say, oh, my God, you're so stupid. I can't believe you studied for that. And you got to see you're just taking up someone's seat in the classroom. You should just drop out of school, get a job at the local grocery store. You're worth nothing. You're never going to amount to anything. 
And that's what I would say to myself. And then I think, would I say that to my best friend? Right. If my best friend studied hard for a test and got a C, would I go to my best friend and say, oh my God, you're so stupid. I can't believe you studied for that and you only got a C. You should just drop out of school. You're such a, you're not going to make anything in your life. No way. Right. But why do we talk to ourselves like that? What we say to our best friend is, hey, that's okay. It's only one test. Go talk to the teacher. See if you can get some extra credit or do something else. It's all right. You're okay. Right. So right. that's what we need to do is start talking to ourselves in that way and realizing that there's a difference between reinforcing our ego and building our self-esteem. Mm, yeah. Cause so much of what's out there is earn it, earn oh. self-love earn, you know, like, and you yeah. know, I work with the body for a living and, mm -hmm. and physiques and changing. And I'm constantly telling my clients this, I'm like, listen, you're, if you think that you're going to earn self-love, you will, it will always be a dangling carrot. You will never get there. Yes. I don't care if you are 5% body fat, you'll be like, yeah, but if I was four. Exactly. <laughs> yes. When you base it on that, like when I go work out, I do it because I want my heart to be healthy. Right. You know, my daughter's 15 years old. I want to see my grandchildren. So it's not about the number on a scale. It's not about how big are my biceps. It's about, am I doing something healthy for myself? Right. But when we get trapped in that, always looking to the outside to make our insides feel better, you're right. 5% isn't enough. It needs to be four. And then four needs to be three. And then all of a sudden we're not healthy at all. Yeah. I think there's, um, we have an inability to sometimes to detach like our, um, maybe a challenge that we're doing right? Like maybe you're trying to write a book or you're trying to lose 10 pounds from your intrinsic value as, as a human, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's well, not that it's just a task. It's one of the things right. you do. Right. It's like, as if you were, you know, trying to clean out your garage and you're wrapping your intrinsic value as a human being on how good a job you did. Like it's ridiculous. Exactly. exactly. And, and, you know, one of the stories that I tell is when we take a look at when we really start doing the work of figuring out who we are and where we fit and feeling good about who we are, it's like walking into a room filled with garbage up to our waist. And we're thinking, I don't want to go through that. That's going to be hard and it's going to smell and it's going to be horrible. I'd rather just stay outside and make everything on the outside look okay. Right. But when you finally get in there and do the work and you start cleaning things up, then it's waist high to knee high. And you're starting to learn all these things about yourself and becoming stronger. And then all of a sudden, I remember when I was doing my work, all of a sudden I looked under this pile and I found something that was really beautiful about myself that I forgot was even there because it was covered up with all the garbage. Mm. So that's where doing the work is so precious. You know, I didn't realize that my emotional self, you know, us guys are raised with this idea that you don't have feelings, you know, suck it up, be a man, right? You know, big boys don't cry. I heard someone at Disney one time, their son tripped and fell, his knee was bleeding, he was crying. And his father's like, what are you a little girl? Stop crying. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> You're like, so, I'm watching trauma and programming oh, in real yes. time. <laughs> and I wanted to go up to the kid and say, it's okay. You're allowed to cry, but you know, you, you, yeah. Know. And it's so hard watching those messages get reinforced. And when I got in touch with my feelings and realized that I'm a very emotionally sensitive person and that it's actually a strength not a weakness, right? I know my feelings. I know my joy. I know my sadness. I know my anger. So that was that beautiful gift that I found. And that's why in my book and my workshops and everything I do, I want to give people the tools that they need to be able to do that for themselves. I don't have anything special. I just chose to do the work. Mm, all right. Let's talk. Can you share some of your tools and, and how, how sure. you start the work? Where does somebody start? It's like, cause they hear this and they're like, yeah, I know. I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I've got lots of garbage and a nice shiny package. Like where do I freaking start? Okay. Number one is look at where you are on that continuum between ego and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, there have been maybe a handful of people in our history who've attained pure self-esteem. Perfection is a tool of the ego. Right. So stop looking at perfection as being the goal. You don't expect your best friend to be perfect. Stop expecting yourself to be perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Now, on the other side, very few people have been pure ego. We're all somewhere on that continuum. So to take an honest assessment of where you are. Mm -hmm. And what I believe is that it's not as important where you are on the continuum as in which direction you're pointed in. So even for someone who says, I want to do something different, boom, you're pointed in the right direction. Now what you do and what I teach people is before you can really build self-esteem, you have to look at how you're tearing yourself down, like you were talking about at the beginning. And I look at simple words and phrases that we use on a regular basis that are so devastating to self-esteem. And the number one word that I talk about is can't. Mm. I can't lose these last 10 pounds. I can't ask my boss for a raise. I can't get out of this relationship. I can't. Right. Now, I believe that life gives us hurdles, but we have a tendency to turn hurdles into walls. And we do that with these obstacle words. I can't takes a hurdle and turns it into a wall. I can't quit smoking. I can't quit drinking. You know, I'm in recovery from addictions coming up on 36 years. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, I remember saying, I can't do this. And then I would go back to drinking. I can't, I can't quit smoking. So I keep smoking. But as soon as I got rid of the can't, and I realized it's not a can't, it's a won't. You know, I can't lose these last 10 pounds. You know, really, is it a can't? Or, you know what, I'm not really willing to give up churros and Mickey bars yet. But when I am, now I know what to do. Actually, I heard about this awesome keto plan out there that I'm going to start. <laughs> yeah. <Thanks. laughs> so it's not about I can't do it. Am I really willing to do the work? So replacing can't with the honest answer of I'm not ready to. I don't want to. So yeah. once you do that, you're clearing away the obstacle, turning it back into a hurdle. And a hurdle is much easier to get over than a wall. Mm, I so, love that. Just admitting instead of like, I can't in disempowering yourself, just saying, mm -hmm. I don't want to boom, straight back into your power. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I don't want to is so <laughs> much more powerful than I can't. Right. Yeah. yeah. And another one, and you alluded to this one earlier. Oh, this one, this is the one I used to do to myself all the time. The should, mm -hmm. I should exercise more. I should eat better. I should drink less. I should do this. I should do that. Should, should, should. All I end up doing is shutting all over myself. Right. And I need to stop shooting. It's not, Absolutely. I should exercise more. Do I really want to? Yeah. You know what? I really do. So I'm going to find one more day a week. You know, I go to my gym and it's funny. I, I'll talk to people as we're rapping and getting ready to do our boxing stuff. And I'll say, you know, we just won by walking through the door. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much, you know, I need to burn 600 calories. I need to live. No, just being there, just doing something good for your heart. That's the win. Oh yeah. I think so no shoulds. It's not, oh, I should exercise harder. I should. No, just walking in the door is the win. So looking for those little victories and taking out the should and the couldas and the wouldas, and, you know, they're the cousins, you know, getting rid of those two. And you're, it's amazing how much more clarity you get when you're honest with yourself with what's really going on rather than, oh, I can't, oh, I should, you know, I just talked to someone earlier today. I just can't be places on time. I'm always late. That always happens. It's like something I can't change. It's like, well, as long as you keep telling yourself that you're absolutely right. Yep. That's so true, man. And you're hitting the nail on the head with like, my, my mind goes to the body, right? Cause that's what I do mm -hmm, for a living. Sure. But I'm like, there's so many, that's a, that's a sticky one for a lot of people. Cause there's so much shooting all over the world. Like you yeah. should look like this. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, first of all, let's take a walk around in real life public and not on TV or movies walk around and and is it the same thing that you're seeing in your should mind, right? On TV yeah. or whatever, that's mm -hmm. not reality. And the other thing I always say is like, listen, like you don't have to get all super fit. You just need to know that if you want to, you can, that's yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. And just going into the gym and doing a workout is better than not. Right. And, yeah. it, and, and when you approach it with what you're saying of this, like, I just did something good for myself. Good for mm -hmm. me. Let me give yep. myself that little gold star sticker, you know, like good for me. Good for me. Here you go, body. That was so good yep. for you. You did a great job body. Thank you for supporting me through that. And that's going to be so good for you too. When you have yes. that approach with it, you're going to feel empowered and happy versus like, well, 
gosh, I should should have done that four more times this week. But oh, what, right. you know, <laughs> right? Exactly. Look at what yeah. you did rather than what you didn't do, and put the the emphasis on the positives. Mm, okay, yeah. so seeing yourself, I think that's been a theme for me this year. Is so much. I think of uh, like well, we'll get into it because you're an expert on this, but you know, you work with like depression, anxiety, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something I've kind of honed in on a pattern that I've noticed on people who seem depressed or just in a, in a funk, maybe they're not clinically depressed, but they're kind of in that funk is that they aren't seeing themselves and they so desperately want someone to see them, right? They're like looking for it everywhere, except, but they won't give it to themselves. And as soon as they start to, as soon as they like switch that a little bit, wow, it's like their whole energy changes. Could you speak on that? Absolutely. You know, one of the things I talk about is after you take a look at these obstacle words and what you're doing to keep yourself down, the way to overcome low self-esteem and the depression and anxiety and the way we talk to ourselves and look at ourselves and because we want other people to see us in a certain way and we don't feel like they will so we feel bad about ourselves and it's this horror it's like the hamster on the treadmill Mm -hmm. we're running and running and running but we're not getting anywhere Mm -hmm. so the way to truly build self-esteem and this is in my workshop in my book this is like the main part of what i talk about Mm -hmm. i believe that we are all four different parts We are physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And just like we exercise and nourish our physical self, it's important to nourish and exercise our mental, our emotional, and our spiritual. Mm -hmm. And we can either nourish and exercise in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. And when we look at exercising and nourishing the mental, you know, when I go to the gym and I have a good workout, that's good for me physically, mentally, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. I just knocked out all three going to the gym. (laughs) And now it's about being intentional about doing that. Mm -hmm. So exercising and nourishing the mental self, we can do that through reading, crossword puzzles, meditation, naps. I mean, there's so many different ways Mm -hmm. to do it. And I list a lot of them in my book and my workshop, and I, I have a bunch of different ways to do that. But it's about finding things that work for you. And to give yourself a break when it comes to starting this process, you're not going to get it right, right away. Uh You know, one of the, one of the rounds in the, in the gym that I go to is one of those speed bags where you, Mm. you know, it took me a month to get that thing down. It would, I'd feel like it was going to come back and hit me in the head and I couldn't get the rhythm down. And I was just patient with myself and I watched some people walk in and they don't get it right away. And they get really frustrated and get angry. Then they don't want to come back to the gym. I'm like, no, Mm -hmm. give yourself time to learn these new things. So if you've had a lifetime of being your own worst enemy, it's going to take time to switch that around. But when you notice yourself saying something negative to you, just kind of stop and go, whoa, okay, that was a trigger. All right. What can I say instead? What would I say to my best friend right now? I say, you know what? You're beautiful just as you are. It doesn't matter what that number on the scale is. It doesn't matter that you have three new zits overnight. I still love you for who you are. Totally. So that's what we need to do for ourselves and start to exercise and nourish, uh, you know, the emotional, that's the hardest one. That's what I was going to ask you. I'm like, Ooh, let's a good thing in that one. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love talking about this one because I feel like we live in a society of emotional anorexia. Mm. We do not know our feelings. We deny them. We shut them right. down. We turn them into what they're not. You know, a, a lot of men have a tendency to take their hurt and their sadness and turn it sideways. And it comes out as anger. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm not allowed to go to someone and say, um, hey, I got to tell you that what you just said to me really hurt my feelings. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't say that anymore. I, no way. So instead, <laughs> what do us men do? Hey, man, you piss me off. You say that again, I'm going to take you out. So when I look at all the anger that's happening, it's all about hurt and sadness. Mm. Look at everything that happens in our, all these tragic things. You know, I think about the riot at the Capitol. That wasn't about anger. It was about people felt hurt. Mm -hmm. They felt sad. They were confused. They didn't understand what was going on. And and they switched it and it came out as anger. And people got killed. And look at all the wars that are going on and the territorial struggles. It's all ego. 
It's all, I want to be better than you. I need more land. I need more of this. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the Native Americans, when they first came, were here, they're like, yeah, you want to build a house there? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, there's no territorialism. And, and when we can kind of get in touch with the feelings for what they are, the hurt, the sadness, um, a lot of women are raised with not being able to feel their anger because that's not acceptable. Right. You be cute, young lady, smile, put on a right. smile, look cute. And, and be getting forgiving angry. and sweet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So right. what I find a lot of women do is they take their anger and turn it sideways and it comes out of sadness. Mm. So s- someone will do something that makes them angry and they start crying. I can't believe you just said that to me. Mm. And they cry through their anger. But mm-hmm. I believe that anger is a human dignity. Anger is a boundary that says, no, it's not okay for you to talk to me that way. No, it is not okay for you to touch me that way. I love that women are finally becoming more empowered Mm -hmm. to be able to have those boundaries. And those boundaries can be in anger. No, it's not okay. Now, there's a difference between anger and violence. I'm not advocating for violence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Anger is a feeling. Violence is an action. So it's getting in touch with nourishing and exercising that emotional self. And one of the best ways to start with that is by listening to music. Mm. Music taps right into the emotional self. I know that when I'm feeling really mellow, I listen to Hosier or I listen to, you know, different types of music. When I'm going to the gym, I listen to Disturbed and Slipknot. So, you know, depending on my mood, I will listen to different types of music. So use music as a way to kind of activate that emotional self. Journaling is also a great way to get in touch with your emotional self. Journal about what you're feeling and what's triggering your feelings and what's working and what's not working in your life. So that's another one that I usually suggest to people, but there's so many ways to do that and looking for the things that have crossover like meditation or working out or whatever it is playing music for the for the musicians out there and it's not about playing it perfectly not everyone is a beethoven not everyone is a neil pert on the drums so just be okay with your talent and where again if you played a, a guitar solo and your best friend was listening and you messed up on a couple things and afterwards you went oh my god i messed up oh my god no man you sounded great mm-hmm. that was awesome So it's about giving yourself a break, not expecting perfection and treating yourself like your own best friend rather than your own worst enemy. I love what you're saying about emotions so much, because I I have found for me, what has been most helpful is when I'm feeling emotionally triggered about something and whatever emotion I'm feeling, I, I have learned the practice of just saying, why, why? why am I so upset about that? Or mm-hmm. why am I so offended? Or why am I, what's really <laughs> going on there? You know, why mm-hmm. does, because there's plenty of things that just brush right past us and we could care less, you know, like mm-hmm. I could walk down the street and some old lady could be like, you're ugly. <laughs> I would not, I'd be like, Oh, do you yeah. need a hug? You know, like I wouldn't exactly. take that personally, but maybe if it was something I was sensitive about and she mm-hmm. stuck me right there, I'd be like, Oh, I knew it, you know? And mm-hmm. so anyway, I, I, I've learned the practice of just asking myself, Myself, like why 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 and I have found mm-hmm. that to be a very self-loving practice um mm-hmm. but like the reason I love what you're saying so much is because I think in this uh spirituality is becoming more commonplace like most of mm-hmm. not most of us but a lot of us have meditation practices we go out into nature we tap in a source like we feel that but I feel like sometimes it gets mm, the connotation is if you're truly spiritual And if you've achieved self-mastery, it's almost like, it feels like the goal is to not have emotions about anything. Like to just be like, to just be like, oh, that's okay. Peace, love, and light or whatever people say, you know what I mean? And so anyway, I like what you're saying here a lot Mm -hmm. because you're removing the shaming from it's okay to be angry about something. It's okay to be sad. It's okay. You know, we don't have to turn into these robots where we just like, own it away. You know, it's there, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of those spiritual quote gurus do not have what I want. Mm. And I don't want to be at that place where I'm just (laughs) okay with everything all the time. 
It's right. like, no, I want to experience things. I want to be right. out there. Hey, if that works for you, great. Yeah. But that is not my cup of tea. Love that. I want to be out there in the trenches and work with people and help them find their way and, you know, work out some of my own stuff still, because I'm not perfect by any means. Oh my Lord, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so, but it's but about yet you patient. are, <laughs> huh? but yet you are just as you are. <laughs> exactly. And today I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the good, the bad and the ugly. And just yeah. like I am with my best friend, I am with me. And, you know, it's so, it's really freeing to be your best friend because, you know, I'll go to a movie by myself or I'll go to, I go to the Disney parks by myself. Sometimes, you know, my wife was like, are you going to the, are, do you want to go to Disney? I'm like, yeah, you know what though? I think I want to go to Animal Kingdom. And she said, you have that look. You want to go by yourself? I'm like, do you mind? She's like, no, <laughs> go. So I go and I just hang out and I get to go wherever I want to go and eat wherever I yeah. want to eat. And if I want to sit and watch the ducks for an hour, I can do that. And no one's like, can we go? Can we go? Can we go? So when we are become our own best friend, it brings so much freedom. Seriously. Oh, I, awesome. I, I, I just have to share. I, the first time I ever experienced what you're talking about was I, I did a study abroad in Spain in college Ooh. and on the way back, the airlines changed my flight and they were like, we're so sorry. We're going to have to put you in a hotel in London overnight. Oh, <laughs> poor thing. Your schedule. I'm like, darn it. <laughs> I was so, <laughs> so this was, I was um, 20 years old, just barely 20 years old. And this was my first time, like truly being in kind of a, you know, touristy place for me anyway, um, mm -hmm. by myself. Right. Yeah. So I jumped on the tube and I went into London and there were the double decker buses and the red phone booths mm -hmm. and the big Ben and the Buckingham palace. And it was truly like the, it was the day that I found out how fun it can be to be by yourself and just do whatever you want. And you're in pure meditation the whole time. You're just yeah. observing everything. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, I highly recommend like going somewhere, like, like you're saying mm -hmm. by yourself, it really yeah. improves relationships with self and it can actually be incredibly fun <laughs> oh big time yeah and another thing that i encourage people to do when next time you're in your car turn the radio off just yeah. be with yourself yeah you know, no distractions we're so used to distractions today yep. between phones and social media and and all of most of them just reinforce ego but yeah. when you do have those opportunities like that you get to really experience what it is to be with self. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Can you share some of your personal story on how mm. you got onto these things? Oh man, what a story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how far back are we going way back? Like yeah, way back. back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so I was raised in a family system. My parents, when, when they were growing up, they had, not, you know, very little, I don't think they were in poverty, but they were probably lower middle class mm -hmm. and they got married young. And when I was four and my sister was three, we, my mom and dad were tired of Minnesota and said, let's go to California. So they packed up their car, everything they owned, 300 bucks in his pocket, beat up Chevy. And we moved to California. He started um, working as an accountant and pretty quickly met someone as a client who said, hey, Al, you want to invest in some real estate? And apparently real estate in California is a nice little thing to get involved with. <laughs> Especially back so, then. <laughs> yeah. So he went in on this apartment building and one led to two and two led to three and three led to a dozen. And, you know, in his heyday, I think he had like 15 apartment buildings and 12, 20 condos on Maui and, wow. and Orange Grove and a mini. I mean, he had all this stuff. So I was raised with a lot of money. As he was getting more successful, the houses were getting bigger, the vacations were becoming more elaborate. So I wanted for nothing. And I had, from society standpoint, everything a person could possibly want. Mm. On the outside, it looked awesome. On the inside, I was dying. Mm. I had no idea who I was, what I wanted, where I wanted to go. So where are you going to go to college, son? It's like, I'm only in eighth grade. Come on. <laughs> so that's there what my kids always say. They're like, don't ask that. I don't know oh. anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I quickly found in when I was 15 years old, I escaped into alcohol and marijuana. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And at 17, it expanded to cocaine. And I finally felt like I fit in somewhere. And that was my social group. And that's when the voices in my head stopped because I didn't care anymore. And I started using, and there's no addiction in my family anywhere. But, you know, addiction is such a tricky thing. I mean, I know people that could drink and drink and drink and just stop whenever they want, and they're not alcoholic. And people who drink and drink and boom, they cross that line. Right, right. It's such a scary thing. So I got caught in the web of addiction, and it took me to a place where I was expelled from college twice. I was fired from a job delivering pizza. Mm -hmm. And on May 16th, 1984, I got the letter from San Diego State saying that I was expelled for the second time. And I thought, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. So I got a pint of 151 rum and I just drank that. And I had some weed left over. So I smoked everything that I had and I ripped off a friend for $25 and got a quarter gram of cocaine and I did it in one line and I didn't even get high. And I thought, I can't even do this anymore. I thought, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go to my room. And I sat down on my bed. And I thought, how am I going to do this? And I thought, okay, I'll put a note on my door that says, don't come in, just call 911. And I went to my closet and got a dive knife that my parents gave me as a gift one year. And I was going to sit in the bathtub so that I didn't make a mess for anyone to have to clean up. And I knew if you were serious, you cut up your arm rather than across. And then I thought, well, can you cut one and then the other? I don't know. Maybe I'll just slice open my throat instead. And I looked up into the mirror to see where to start. And I made eye contact. And I went, what the heck are you doing? And all of a sudden, it's all these flashes. And I thought, oh, my God, I have a drug problem. And that was the first time it occurred to me that that was the issue that was going on. And I was like, I don't want to die. I need help. And I truly believe the most courageous thing a person can do is ask for help. Yeah. But I didn't know who to turn to or what to do. And then all of a sudden this flash in my head of this billboard that I had seen, it said drug problem. If so, call 1-800-BE-SOBER. And it took me 45 minutes to find the courage to pick up the phone and dial all the numbers and wait until it rang. You know, I dial three numbers and hang up and I'd walk around my room. Oh my God, what do I say? Hi, my name's Randy. I think I am a drug addict. What do you, I don't know. <laughs> right, right. So finally it was like, just do it. And I picked it up and I dialed the phones and it rang and a voice answered and said, be sober hotline. Can I help you? I was like, yeah, um, I think I have a drug problem. And she's like, well, you called the right place. You know, my name is, I didn't, I think it was Tia or Pia. I don't, I don't even remember her name, but that woman who answered the phone that night, she saved my life. Mm. She, we talked for about an hour and a half and she told me about how she was an addict and how she gave it up and how hard it was, but she did it. And there she was with a year and a half and now she's helping others. And I don't know why, but it was like, that gave me hope. Yeah. If she can do it, I can do it. And that's the message. If I can do it, you can do it. You know, with your story, if you can do it, anyone can do it. You know, it's like, we don't have anything. There was no magic pill or magic something that we had. We just one day found that courage and that strength inside of us to say no more. Yeah. And we found that courage and we moved on. And it was so scary and so hard. I didn't know how to get sober. I have to let go of all my friends. I have to switch right. the way that I have fun and what I do and, But all of a sudden, after two weeks and three weeks, I started to feel better. I wasn't sleeping until three in the afternoon. At 60 days, I went back to San Diego State and I went to the assistant dean of the College of Sciences at San Diego State. And I said, you know, you've expelled me a couple of times, but I'd really like another chance. She said, I don't give people third chances. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, here's my, my 60 day chip from Cocaine Anonymous and I'm sober now. And the reason why I wasn't doing well is because I'm an addict and I'm an alcoholic and now I'm sober. And I'd really like another chance because I realize now in my recovery, how important my education is. And she sat back in her chair. She said, I've never in my 20, whatever years of being here, I have never given anyone a third chance until today. Mm. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take one class experimental psych. You're going to get a C or better. And if you do, I will let you back in the university. Mm. Wow. And here's how the universe works. Here's the funky thing that is so cool. And I'm sure you've experienced this too. There were a dozen courses or different offerings for experimental psych. And I was like, okay, which one do I want? I thought, okay, it's a lot of work. So I'm going to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't want to go too early. How about 11 o'clock? 
So I picked the 11 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I went. And the first day, teacher's talking. And I'm like, oh, my God, how am I ever going to do this? I don't know. I don't know. So I went to talk to her after class. And I said, hi, my name's Randy Havison, and um, I'm just getting back into school. And Celia Marshak told me to take this class. And I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic, and I need to get a C in this class. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes in order to make that happen. So I would really love your help in making that happen. And she said, why did you choose my section? I'm like, I don't know. It just seemed day and time seemed to work. She said, I've been in Al-Anon for 25 years. I'm going to help you. You will pass this, but I'm going to make sure you do the work. I will not do it for you, but I will help to help you to pass this class. Of all the classes I could have taken, yeah. you know, those experiences where you just are in that right place yep. at the right time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. And I got a C in the class. Woo! And I didn't beat <laughs> myself up for not getting a B. I got my C. And today I have my bachelor's degree and I went on to get my master's degree and I went on, I was a therapist for a while and I went and spoke at university of San Diego and the woman there said, Oh my God, you need to do this. You just really help these students so much. And then she called me six months later and said, do you want to work on a college campus? I was like, what? Yeah. There's a position open for a coordinator of alcohol and other drug education at a university in Northern California. And I, I gave them your name. I hope you don't mind. And I went to work in the university system. I worked on four different college campuses. I mean, a druggie and a drunk who can't deliver a pizza and got kicked out of college twice. I was a university administrator on four campuses. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. All you have to do is get out of your own way. And it's so beautiful because if you hadn't hit that low, you wouldn't really be able to help people. Like, how can you help? And I think it's so beautiful. Like the human experience is, it's like we shame ourselves for not being quote unquote perfect. Yeah. But like, if we never have any sort of life experience, if we never have any sort of pain, how can we help anybody else who's going through the pain? We just would be these like kind of lame, inexperienced oh. adults that are like, wow, that, I mean, that sounds really crappy. Like, sorry, you're going through that. Like anyway, mm -hmm. so I made this chip dip. It's really good. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you just like, wouldn't be able to bring as much value to other people's lives if we didn't go through our own crap you know so exactly I, you know, I, if, if i, I didn't that. go through that i'd probably be working for dad i'd probably yeah. be in the commercial real estate business yeah i'd be making a ton of money i'd be living <laughs> in beverly hills or brentwood and i would have that life yeah. but would i really be happy and i look at all the lives that i've touched right. if i could go back and choose which you could live in the Beverly Hills house, make a ton of money and do all that. Or you could go through all of that shit and be here today, yeah. helping these people and writing the book and being on Tara's podcast. Which one do you want to choose? I would choose this in a heartbeat. I would go through every single bit of it again. And you can feel it coming from your soul. You can yeah. feel happiness just oh. coming from your soul. Like you're just you, you're unleashed, you're free. Like yeah. versus I don't even want to think of that version of you <laughs> in yeah. the Beverly Hills house. Like I'm like, no, yeah, yeah. not that guy. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so beautiful. So much of our, we're, uh, we're, you know, your, your logo we were talking about before we started is the Phoenix rising. And, mm -hmm. you know, I shared with you that I also had a real low, low and, and, and all like every ounce. I feel like every ounce of me being truly myself came out of that, of being stripped away of all these, you know, masks that I was wearing and all these mm -hmm. programs that I was living by, it all got taken away. And I had yeah. to eat my humble pie, hit big yeah. old spoonfuls of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're right. It sucks when you're in a position where you have to ask for help and you're like, guess what? I don't have my crap together at all, yeah. but it can be the best thing that ever happened to you. So if anybody's going through a low, low, I'm telling you it's for a reason. Just yes. have faith. <laughs> exactly. And just put one foot in front of the other. Yep. Don't look down the street to oh. see what's coming. Just yeah. put the focus right there yep. in front of you yep. and one foot in front of the other, and you will get through this. The, the resources will come into your life. Yep. You know, you're not listening to Tara's podcast for no, just, oh, I was just putting, there was something drew you here that you were meant to get this message from. And if it's not my episode, it's another episode. You know, you're going to keep listening until that one thing really resonates with yeah. you. You're like, wow, yeah, this makes sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I cannot relate to that anymore. And it's truly like when you have that faith and that little thing comes in, like if something Randy said spoke to you and you, you have yes. that little spark and you oh. act on it, it's like, uh, my co-host oh. of my other podcast, uh, kick ass life. She always, I love how she says this. She's like, the universe always gives you a prize. So when yeah. you, you, you get that intuitive nudge and you're like, Ugh, this is scary. I don't know if I can, okay, I'm going to freaking do it. You get a prize. And then it's, exactly. it becomes like this magical gingerbread crumb trail of just awesomeness and magic. And like, you're like, no way can these, this many synchronicities be coming in my path. And mm -hmm. that all comes when you just take, like you said, that one little step yep. in faith and then another one and mm -hmm. another one. And it's a really rad way to live. So yep. I, I yep. highly suggest losing everything and getting stripped down to nothing and doing that. It's really awesome. <laughs> it is. And let me tell you, let me give you an example of some of the magic that happens. People, I, I have this energy about me that, you know, I love and it tends to draw people who are looking. For, oh, it's so awesome. Like Tara, one day I want to go to Disney with you. That would be so much fun. Oh my God. That'd be great. We have We'd a have strong a inner child. Very strong. Exactly. Inner child. Yes. Yes. In fact, I have this dream. I'm doing this program called esteem fest where mm. I want to bring people together. And once we can all gather safely, I want to do it here in Orlando and Friday and Saturday is going to be speakers and events and meditation and yoga and all yeah. these different things to empower people. And then on Sunday, we all go and do an inner child play date at the magic kingdom. Oh my gosh. That's how awesome. much fun is that going to yeah. be? Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. But here's how the magic happens. Um, I was in LA visiting my parents because I've been vaccinated. They've been vaccinated and I hadn't seen them in 16 months. So I flew out there to spend time with them. And there was this restaurant that I wanted to go to. And we walked up to the restaurant and I said, do you have any reservations for tonight? They're like, oh no, we don't have reservations, but maybe you can call and get an order to go. So I jumped on their website and I looked to see, and it said, we're no longer taking to go orders because we're too busy. So I said, no, I can't do, get a to-go order. It's too busy. Well, maybe call them. So I called and I said, hi, I'd like to place an order to go. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an hour and a half wait right now. I'm like, oh, and I thought, okay. And I, my parents like, well, maybe we'll go somewhere else. I'm like, no, I would really like to eat here. So I went to the people at the front desk. I said, I have a huge favor to ask. I'm visiting from Orlando. I haven't seen my parents in 16 months. And one of the places I really wanted to visit and eat at is your restaurant because I love it so much. Is there any way you could please just find a reservation for us? It would totally make my day. How many people? I said three. Hold on one second. And she went and did something and came back and said, are they here? I said, yeah, they're right there. Okay, come on. And um, we got a table. Awesome. The awesome. magic habit, that's that little gift right. from the universe. Yeah. Because if you're just doing the right thing, you know, my whole thing is living in gratitude. You know, if I'm in oh, gratitude yeah. and looking for ways to be of service, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing right there. Gratitude and service. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and I with this whole pandemic thing, Everyone keeps talking about what they lost. Right. And I'm looking at all the things that I've gained, the friends that I've made because of how common Zoom it. Tara, I wouldn't be here today. We never would have met if it wasn't for the pandemic. Yeah. And I look at all the things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's been tragedy and it's horrible. And the people who've lost their lives and been sick and all of that is horrible. Yeah. And for the teenagers and the kids who've been without school, terrible, horrible. I'm not going to minimize that at right. all, but there are positives that are coming from it too. We're learning the value of working from home, yeah. you know, putting on a button shirt, but I'm still in my gym shorts. Yep. You know, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're finding how much value there is in just being at home yep. and, and being able to work from home. It's, it's so many gifts have come mm -hmm. from this. Yeah. So let's look for the positive rather than the negative. Totally. The simplicity. I know like it's starting to warm up here in Utah right now. And I went for a walk. There's a lake by my house and I went to go walk to it. And I just got outside and the sun was soaking into my skin and there was a breeze and there were birds chirping. And I, uh, here I am in this safe community. And like, I'm like, I have everything like yeah. what, what more could I want than just mm -hmm 
being in this beautiful earth and like we're yeah. so well cared for always and mm -hmm. you know it, it's funny I, I started to walk around the lake and that's where you get to the nicer houses <laughs> and I was like okay well that that would be nice too <laughs> but I was like but but the thing is is that I don't live in a reality in which it's like I I have to have that in order to be happy I'm just as happy here and I think when you have this kind of go with the flow of like I'm great whatever whatever comes my way it's not going to make me lose my drive. I'm still driven. I still have goals, but, mm -hmm. but I'm so grateful for where I'm at too. And it's such a happy and fun way to live because you're never in this scarcity that comes when you yes. can't be grateful, right? Like if I was like, my house sucks. And only when I have one of those like bajillion dollar houses in my mind, well, now you just created hell for yourself for no freaking reason. Mm -hmm. Instead exactly. of being like, Oh, I'm so lucky. You know, I'm like, man, if you don't feel lucky, go drive through like Tijuana or a poor part of Mexico for a second and see you don't even how have to they're go living that far. <laughs> true. Yeah, it's true. Go mm -hmm. down the street to another area of your where you live. It's like, man, we have so much. And if we can't be grateful for that, like we're just robbing ourselves of happiness that is available mm -hmm. to us all the time. Yeah. So totally yeah. with you on gratitude. And, and you know and what? Here's one point. It's okay to look at those houses and say, God, I'd love to live there one day. Yeah. Right. It's okay to do yeah. that. You know, there's right. nothing wrong with having wealth or right. having these things, but it's about not letting it define you. Right. That's the whole thing, you know, to make that right. Yeah, it's great that now I have more opportunities. You know, my main goal in life is to be a major philanthropist. Mm -hmm. I want to make money so I can give most of it away, but there's this yeah. neighborhood here that I really want to live in. Yeah. And if I can live there, that would be awesome but I'm very okay in the neighborhood that I live in now because exactly. it's gorgeous. I, I love Ed Milet. He's a motivational speaker, real estate guy too. And he calls it blissful dissatisfaction. And I love that <laughs> phrase. So he's like, I'm really, really happy. I'm so grateful for where I'm at, but I'm never satisfied. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I relate. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay to want more. But again, as long yeah. as you're not letting that define you and right. I'm less than because I right. don't have or that defeat house. you, defeat you from where you're at and not being able to see yourself like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, exactly. I love that so much. Yeah. Well, Randy, we'll go ahead and wrap this up, but I want oh. them, I want the listeners to know how they can partake of what you have to offer. I know your website okay. is randyspeaks.com. Can you tell yes. them about different ways they can learn from you? Sure. Yeah. On randyspeaks.com right now, my workshop, I put it on there for free. So if you want to get my entire self-esteem workshop, it's there. It costs nothing. Amazing. I wanted to be of service. Yeah. Um, that's probably going to change because my marketing team is saying, why are you doing that for free? Mm -hmm. And it's like, because people are struggling right now and I don't want to do that, but I'm, we're going to start moving things around. But still, if someone emails me and says, I can't afford to pay for your workshop. Can I get it for free? It's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, my I book is also there on. So in the shop is my book. My workshops are there. My t-shirts. I have a t-shirt um, that says best friend with an arrow pointed up. I love it. <laughs> I love oh, it. and there are all kinds of we over me is another thing that I want to really get out there Ooh. that the ego is about me the self esteem is about we so I have this really cool mm. shirt we over me. Mm. So all of my products and all my stuff is there if you want to know about esteem fest. Uh, we're actually doing our first one online. I don't know when this is going to air but April 17th Saturday April 17th. I think we're going to air right after that. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, that's okay. Because there will be another one. That's all okay. right. All so right. if people go to esteemfest.com, uh, they'll get more information on that. But everything that I do is on the randyspeaks.com website. Okay. Thanks so much. I'll put links to all of that stuff that he just mentioned in the show notes below. Randy, thank you for going on your crazy path and <laughs> Phoenix rising and coming yeah. and sharing all your goodness and helping others along the way. Thank you so much. It's been You're super so fun welcome. Thank you, you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll keep in touch and we'll do more great stuff together. I want you to be a speaker at a steam fest one time. Ooh, I would love to. I know. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tara. Thanks, Randy.